Hi class, today I join you from the top of a volcano. And what place is safer than that right now? Um, but in all seriousness, let's get down to business. Suppose I offer you two gambles. You're only gonna get to play this one time. That's your only shot at it. And you only get to play one or the other. Gamble A, it's a 50-50 gamble between getting $20 million and getting nothing. Gamble B, it's not really a gamble. You get $9 million but there's no risk. You just get that. You just hand it over to you. Think about that for a moment. You can pause your video while you're thinking about it. And once you know which one you would choose in this hypothetical scenario, then restart your video. So pause the video now. Most students would choose gamble B. That is, they'd want to get $9 million rather than to take the gamble. So let me ask you a question now. This is an important part or important idea for this lecture. Which of these two gambles gives you a higher expected income? Gamble A or gamble B? Right, it, it, it's gamble A here. With gamble A, on average, if you were to play this over and over again, you'd get $10 million. You don't actually get $10 million. You either get $20 million or nothing, but in expectation, or on average, if you played this over and over again, you'd get $10 million, which is more than the $9 million you get under Gamble B. Okay, so what does this tell us? It tells us that people are willing to get rid of some expected income in order to get rid of the risk. That is, people dislike risk. That's not everyone, but most people feel that way. And this is actually a really important concept because it explains large portions of the economy. So, for example, a lot of people pay insurance premiums. And the reason this, these markets exist is some insurer is willing to accept some money for you, let's say it's home insurance, and in the event that your house burns down, they will pay to rebuild your house. Okay, so the idea here is that you're going to pay a little bit more than the expected costs. So, that, you know, there's all sorts of insurance markets. What fraction of GDP do you think is spent on insurance? Might be surprised. The answer is $1 trillion, where GDP is something like $15 trillion. Um, but if you sort of average across consumers and look at what percent each consumer spends on, then take the average of that, by some estimates, it's 10% of income is spent on insurance. So people are spending a lot on this product whose sole purpose is to reduce or eliminate risk. Okay, so... What we're going to need to do first to help us understand this problem is we're going to have to look at the difference between expected income and expected utility. So let's start with expected income. Expected income, it's going to be a weighted probability of your different incomes that you could have. So let's say there's some probability that uh, the first outcome arises. So it could be that you, you know, don't get a bonus or something like that. I'm just going to denote this probability with PR with the one subscript. So it could be 50%, it could be 20%. There's some number in here. And it's going to be multiplied by your income in that case, okay, plus the probability of another outcome times your income in that other outcome. You know, and you can you can add any number of you know possible outcomes to this expected income formula. Uh, the only thing that you need to hold is you need the probabilities to sum to one. Okay. Now we're going to contrast that with expected utility of the income. So we're going to assume that if you optimally you know, choose the right basket of goods to buy, that every income gives you some amount of utility. Okay. And if we make that assumption, we can calculate the expected utility which is a function of the income that you might get. So here, the expected utility is going to be the probability of the first outcome times the utility that you get in the event of that first income. Right? So maybe this is the probability that you don't get a bonus times the utility of the income that you get if you don't get a bonus. Okay, and then we, oops, we're going to add to that the probability of the second outcome, where your income is some other amount, times the utility of the income in, in that case. Okay, and we could 
you know, extend this to any number of potential outcomes. Okay, so the important difference here is that the expected income is just a weighted probability of the different incomes that a person might receive. But when we're looking at the expected utility, each income is associated with some utility. But to calculate the expected utility, we're going to take a weighted average of the utilities that correspond to each possible income that you might receive. And this is a very important distinction. As we saw, consumers do not maximize the former. They're not maximizing their expected income. We know that none of you, or most of you probably did not choose that. Some of those are some do, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different set of preferences. But most people would actually prefer the more certain gamble that gives them $9 million with certainty. And what they're doing, when they're choosing that, is they're looking at their expected utility of that income under each of those two gambles. So they can calculate the expected utility of the income under gamble A and the expected utility of income under gamble B. And they're seeing which of those yields a higher expected utility. Okay. And that's how we incorporate for consumers' risk preferences in these economic models. Okay, so now I want to look at a specific problem. Let's assume that there's two possible outcomes for your income this period. Suppose that with 50% probability, you get $10,000 in income this year. And with the remaining probability, you get $0 in income. And we'll assume that the utility is equal to the square root of income. So the utility associated with $4 in income would be the square root of four or two. So let's start by calculating the expected income. Okay. The expected income in this case is the probability of the first outcome, which is 50% or expressed in fractional terms, 0 0.5, times the income in that case, which would be $10,000, plus the probability of the other outcome, which is in this case also 50%, times the income in that case, which is zero. Okay, so the expected income is 0 0.5 times 10,000 plus 0 0.5 times zero, which is just equal to 5,000. Now this is where I often see mistakes happen. So I wanna be very clear about how to calculate the expected utility, the incomes that you might get in this gamble. So the expected utility of the income that you might receive is going to be the probability of the first outcome, which is 0 0.5, times the utility that's associated with the income in that first case. The utility that's associated with $10,000. And then we're going to add to that 0 0.5 times the utility of the income that's received in that second scenario, which is 0. Now we know the utility function, utility function is simply equal to the square root of income. So we're going to multiply 0 0.5 times the square root of 10,000 and then add to that 0 0.5 times the square root of 0. Now you can see the square root of 10,000 is 100, the square root of 0 is 0. So this becomes equal to 50. Now I want to look at something else. Suppose that you could get the expected income of $5,000 with certainty. What would the utility be then? Well, in that case, utility of $5,000 received with certainty is equal to the square root of that $5,000 which is equal to about 70.7, okay? So we can see here that under this utility function, the expected utility of this gamble was 50. The utility of the expected income was higher at 70.7. So if this person could get the expected income with certainty under this utility function, it shows that they would be happier. Just as all of you were much happier to get $9 million with certainty than to have that very risky gamble that might make you incredibly real wealthy, but might not. And this makes a lot of sense. You might, why would people have these preferences? 
Well, think about the think back to the gamble. If you were to get $9 million, I'm guessing for almost all of you, probably all of you, that would dramatically change your life. Think about as you go from $9 million to $20 million. Those additional $11 million, once you're already quite wealthy, probably don't make you that much happier. Yeah, you could buy a little bit more. Maybe you buy a third vacation home rather than just having you know two vacation homes or something like that. But that probably doesn't add that much to your utility, right? So there's diminishing marginal utility of income. The first dollar that you get is really valuable to you. You're going to use that to buy things like food and water so you're not starving. So that probably increases your utility a lot. You know, your millionth dollar is probably making you pretty happy, but not as happy as that first dollar. The utility of your 20 millionth dollar is probably much lower. 